When Sarah gave birth to a black baby, her husband left her for good, years later, DNA revealed the unthinkable, Sarah groaned aloud as she struggled to push through the excruciating pain, determined not to give up, with her husband, Tony, holding her hands and the nurse encouraging her, she summoned all her strength and pushed again, finally, the baby arrived, and Sarah heaved a sigh of relief as she sat back on the stretcher, a weak smile playing on her lips as the baby's cry echoed through. The ward but as Sarah looked up, she saw the confused faces of the nurses and the disappointment on Tony's face as he drew back from the baby, panic surged through her as she demanded to know what was happening, the baby was then handed over to her, and her shock deepened as she beheld a beautiful black baby boy in her arms, Sarah's eyes widened in disbelief, she looked up at Tony, whose angry and disgusted expression pierced her heart, she pleaded with him silently, trying to convey her shock and innocence, but he remained unmoved, as the nurses left the ward, leaving the couple alone, Tony's anger flared, accusing Sarah of infidelity while she swore her innocence, desperate to prove her innocence, Sarah suggested a DNA test, but Tony stubbornly refused, claiming the evidence was clear enough, the argument escalated until Tony stormed out of the ward, leaving Sarah in tears, too weak to cry, a week later, Sarah and her baby were discharged from the hospital, throughout that week, Tony, Never visited, consumed by hurt and anger, Sarah returned home, hoping to reconcile, but Tony remained distant and detached, refusing to acknowledge their baby. One evening, Tony heard a noise from the kitchen and found Sarah with her left index finger under running water, surrounded by broken plates, his anger boiled over as he berated her for bringing a bastard into their home and for not being able to cheat, right? Sarah bit her lip, tears streaming down her face as Tony's words cut deep. She remained silent as he looked at her with disdain before storming out once again, leaving her shattered on the floor, as Sarah cried, her heart ached with pain, it hurt deeply that Tony had lost trust in her so easily, and his stubborn refusal to undergo a DNA test only added to her anguish, coupled with the postpartum hormone changes and sleep deprivation, it became unbearable for her, for months. Tony kept his distance from Sarah and the baby, relegating them to the guest room while he slept. Elsewhere. He would only enter their room when the baby cried loudly, blaming and insulting Sarah for her inability to soothe him, despite the strain on their relationship, Sarah remained hopeful that things would improve, she loved her baby, whom she named Mark, deeply and saw him as a blessing amidst their struggles, one day, Tony returned home early and found Sarah breastfeeding Mark, to her surprise, he knelt beside her, apologizing for his past behavior and admitting his wrongdoing, Sarah was taken aback but grateful for the apology, Tony suggested they go out as a family, a gesture Sarah welcomed eagerly, they dressed up and headed to a restaurant, where they enjoyed a pleasant meal together, sharing jokes and laughter, however, their peace was shattered when a diner approached their table, asking intrusive questions about the baby, Tony became visibly upset, and Sarah felt a sense of unease, the diner's questions escalated, and Tony's anger boiled over, he accused Sarah of, Cheating and causing him embarrassment, Sarah was stunned and humiliated by his outburst as Sarah tried to leave, Tony forcefully restrained her, causing her to scream in pain, other diners intervened, and Tony released her, his eyes burning with anger, Sarah, tears streaming down her face, realized the depth of Tony's mistrust and the extent of his cruelty, she knew she had to leave, but the fear and pain lingered, leaving her shaken to her core, Sarah reached up, soothing the pain in her scalp. As tears streamed down her cheeks, it was all too much, even Mark began to cry, as if sensing the turmoil around him, look at you, smelling all filthy, it's over between us, go and find the father of that bastard, I wish you two a happy ever after, Tony's words echoed in her ears as he stormed out of the restaurant, leaving Sarah drowning in humiliation, now, Sarah navigated life as a single mother, a relentless struggle, balancing work and caring for Mark felt like an insurmountable challenge, Despite her increasing frailty and sickness, she refused to burden others with her problems, she soldiered on, clinging to hope that things would eventually improve, months passed with no relief in sight, when Sarah discovered Mark had a cough, her worry deepened, despite her efforts with cough medicine, his condition worsened, leading to a devastating diagnosis of pneumonia, crushed by the weight of despair, Sarah knew she couldn't lose Mark, desperate, she reached out to Tony, setting aside her. Pride in a last-ditch effort to save their son, 
with trembling hands, she sent a heartfelt text, pleading for his help and begging him to believe her. Two agonizing days later, Tony's reply shattered her hopes, his callous words pierced her heart as he rejected Mark and dismissed Sarah's plea for help. Broken but undeterred, Sarah refused to give up, turning to other mothers for support. She exhausted her savings and borrowed from anyone willing to help, determined to save her son at any cost. Sarah no longer cared about anything else, her sole focus was on ensuring Mark's well-being, fortunately, Mark received the treatment he needed, and his condition improved, however, Sarah's struggles persisted, and weeks after Mark's recovery, she lost her job due to her declining performance, despite tearful pleas and explanations to her manager, he remained unsympathetic, citing multiple warnings that Sarah had seemingly ignored while Sarah's colleagues expressed sympathy, it was a fellow empathizer who suggested a single mother's forum hosted by her friend, Sarah reluctantly attended, finding solace in the supportive community of women who shared their stories of resilience and strength, inspired by their testimonies, Sarah began to heal and started actively seeking new job opportunities to her relief. The women at the forum helped her secure a remote position that paid well. Alleviating some of her financial worries, with newfound stability, Sarah could afford to provide for herself and Mark properly, a reality she once thought impossible. On Sundays, Sarah took Mark to the park, where he played with other children while she watched nearby. One day, while fetching ice cream for them, she returned to find Mark missing. Panic set in as Sarah searched frantically for him until she spotted him with a girl and an adult figure. To her surprise, the adult was Ryan. Her college course representative and a long-lost friend, they embraced, catching up on lost time, Ryan. Learning of Sarah's divorce, expressed sympathy but was pleased to see her happy, he introduced her to his daughter, Hannah, and shared his own story of loss and moving on as they reminisced, Ryan encouraged Sarah to rekindle her passion for painting, a talent she had abandoned during her marriage, he reminded her of the joy it once brought her and urged her to rediscover her artistic skills. The unexpected reunion with Ryan filled Sarah with gratitude and hope, revitalizing her spirits and Sparking a newfound enthusiasm for life Ryan's unwavering support became Sarah's lifeline, igniting her passion for painting once again, encouraged by his enthusiastic praise for her artwork, Sarah found solace and inspiration in her creative pursuits, often sharing her pieces with Ryan, whose genuine joy fueled her confidence as their bond deepened over time. Ryan couldn't deny the growing affection he harbored for Sarah, despite his reservations about complicating their friendship, he took a chance, confessing his feelings and expressing his desire to explore a romantic relationship with her. However, Sarah, still scarred by her past and hesitant to open her heart again, hesitated to reciprocate Ryan's affection, she valued their friendship immensely but feared the vulnerability of love and the potential for heartbreak. Despite her reluctance, Ryan remained steadfast, understanding Sarah's apprehensions yet persistently caring for her. Over the years, their friendship blossomed. Marked by mutual respect and unwavering support for each other, a pivotal moment arose when an art competition presented itself, offering Sarah an opportunity to showcase her talent and possibly secure prestigious recognition. Initially reluctant, Sarah yielded to Ryan's gentle persuasion, reluctantly entering the competition. To Sarah's surprise, her participation yielded remarkable success, propelling her to the semi-finals and reigniting her passion for the arts. With Ryan's steadfast encouragement and care for Mark, Sarah found the strength to persevere, pouring her heart and soul into her artwork. When Sarah emerged victorious as the competition's winner, she was overwhelmed with gratitude, tears of joy streaming down her face as she embraced Ryan, who had been her unwavering pillar of support throughout. In celebration of her achievement, Ryan suggested a dinner to commemorate the occasion. Underneath the tranquil setting of the trees in Ryan's backyard, Surrounded by the warmth of their friendship, Sarah's elation reached new heights in a moment of overwhelming emotion. Sarah's gratitude and affection for Ryan overflowed, leading her to lean in for a kiss, though she immediately recoiled in apology, fearing she had overstepped, Ryan's gentle touch and heartfelt confession softened the tension between them with sincerity in his eyes, Ryan reassured Sarah of his enduring love and devotion, asking her to consider the depth of his feelings as they stood on the brink of possibility. Sarah realized that perhaps, in Ryan, she had found not just a friend, but a 
partner worthy of her trust and affection, tears streamed down Sarah's cheeks as she poured out her heart to Ryan. I like you too, Ryan, but I'm scared, please promise you'll be with me, no matter what, I can't go through this hell again, please, she pleaded, her voice filled with passion and vulnerability, Ryan enveloped her in a warm embrace, his reassurances washing over her like a comforting blanket, no matter the weather, Sarah, I'll always be by your side, he whispered softly, drawing her. Close, Ryan tenderly brushed his lips against hers, igniting a spark of longing and affection between them, in that intimate moment, they shared a deep, heartfelt kiss, sealing their unspoken bond with a promise of enduring love. Two years into their relationship, Ryan knelt before Sarah, a gleaming ring held out in his trembling hand, with tears of joy shimmering in her eyes, Sarah accepted his proposal. Their hearts entwined in a promise of forever as wedding preparations commenced, fate intervened in an unexpected encounter at the mall, Tony, Sarah's past haunting her present, sought her out, desperate to make amends for his past transgressions, despite Sarah's initial reluctance, Ryan's insistence led her to hear Tony out, with a heavy heart, Tony confessed to being Mark's father, a revelation that sent shockwaves through the room, his reasons, however, offered little solace. His late realization stemming from a family secret buried in deception and shame, Sarah's scornful gaze, pierced Tony's facade of remorse as she sternly rebuffed his attempts at reconciliation, with a firm resolve, she walked away, leaving Tony's contrition hanging in the air on their wedding day, as the priest poised to unite them in holy matrimony, an unwelcome interruption shattered the tranquility of the moment, Tony's brazen intrusion threatened to derail the joyous occasion, his presence a stark reminder of past wounds. With steely determination, Sarah confronted Tony, her anger palpable as, she denounced his audacity to disrupt her happiness, Mark's endearing gesture, affirming Ryan as his father figure, served as a poignant testament to their unwavering bond in a swift act of resolve, Sarah ordered Tony's removal from the premises, determined to protect her newfound happiness at all costs, with her son safely returned to his seat, Sarah and Ryan exchanged heartfelt vows, pledging their unwavering devotion to each other before God and their loved ones amidst the cheers of their Jubilant guests, Sarah and Ryan embarked on a journey of love and commitment, their bond fortified by the trials of the past and the promise of a blissful future together, take a break and follow me into the next story. Marco, a 30-year-old police officer, stumbled upon a distressing sight during the early hours of his patrol shift, among the debris in a nearby dumpster. He discovered a whimpering baby girl wrapped in blankets, without hesitation, Marco scooped her up, comforting her until her. Cries turned into smiles that warmed his heart despite initial concerns for the baby's well-being, a swift examination revealed no visible injuries, Marco wasted no time and called for an ambulance, cradling the baby protectively as they rushed to the hospital, medical tests confirmed the baby's good health, but efforts to locate her parents proved futile in the aftermath, Marco faced a pivotal decision, follow the doctor's suggestion to place the baby in an orphanage or take on the Responsibility of parenthood himself, despite the challenges ahead, Marco felt an unshakable bond forming between them, with no family ties of his own and a lingering sense of loneliness since his breakup with Courtney, Marco saw an opportunity to fill the void in his life. After a rigorous adoption process, Marco welcomed the baby girl, whom he named Beverly, into his home. From that moment on, Beverly became the light of Marco's life, bringing joy and purpose to his days, their bond grew. Stronger with each passing day, with Marco embracing his role as Beverly's father wholeheartedly, navigating work and parenting, Marco ensured Beverly's happiness and well-being, dropping her off at daycare during his shifts and entrusting her to his Aunt Mary's care when duty called for night patrols, as Beverly grew, so did their relationship, with Marco cherishing every moment as her devoted father, together. Marco and Beverly forged a beautiful father-daughter bond, their love and devotion to each other filling their lives with warmth and meaning, Marco spared no expense when it came to Beverly's happiness, taking her to enchanting places that dazzled her imagination, while he longed for Beverly to have a mother figure, his heart remained closed to romantic pursuits after the painful betrayal by Courtney, their breakup, just weeks before their planned wedding, left Marco shattered, and Courtney's subsequent departure from town only deepened his sense of loss as Beverly grew older. Marco enrolled her in school, 
watching proudly as she flourished, however, tragedy struck when Beverly was nearly 11 years old, a horrific accident involving a truck and her school bus left Beverly and her classmates critically injured, rushed to the hospital, Beverly slipped into a coma, devastating Marco beyond words. Taking immediate leave from work, Marco remained by Beverly's side. His heart breaking at the sight of his beloved daughter in such a fragile state, despite her unconsciousness. He spoke to her tenderly, reading her stories and sharing his deepest emotions, days turned into weeks, and Marco's unwavering devotion never wavered. Marco's presence at Beverly's bedside became a constant, his love for her pouring out in tears and whispered confessions, some visitors viewed his actions as eccentric, unaware of the depth of Marco's love for his daughter, to Marco, Beverly was everything, his sole reason for being, throughout Beverly's hospitalization, Marco remained her steadfast guardian, his every thought and action dedicated to her recovery. In his eyes, Beverly was not just his daughter but his entire world, a beacon of light in the darkness of his existence. Later, the chief doctor approached Marco with heartbreaking news, the medical team had exhausted all options to revive Beverly. They recommended removing her from life support and declaring her dead, Marco vehemently refused to accept this fate for his daughter, insisting that Beverly would wake up soon. With unwavering determination, Marco vowed to remain by Beverly's side. Until she recovered, ignoring the doctor's stunned expression, Marco rushed to Beverly's bedside, showering her with love and encouragement, he refused to give up hope, clinging to the belief that his daughter would overcome the odds. Ten days passed, marking Beverly's birthday a poignant reminder of the day Marco found and rescued her, he celebrated by her bedside, presenting her with a small cake, flowers, and a heartfelt birthday card, through tears, Marco expressed his deep love and gratitude for Beverly, promising to sacrifice anything for her well-being, overwhelmed with emotion, Marco collapsed in tears, his heartache palpable, however, his despair turned to disbelief and relief when the doctor woke him in the middle of the night to announce Beverly's awakening, Marco rushed to her side, overcome with joy as he embraced his daughter, regardless of her temporary memory loss. Despite Beverly's need for rest and recovery, Marco's elation knew no bounds, he remained by her. Side, eagerly awaiting her full recovery, after a week of intensive care, Beverly regained her memory, her first word, Daddy, bringing tears of joy to Marco's eyes, their reunion was filled with tears and tight embraces, a testament to the bond between father and daughter, though Beverly faced further challenges ahead, Marco remained steadfast in his commitment to her recovery, knowing that together, they could overcome anything, it took nearly a year for Beverly to recover from the trauma of her accident, during which Marco remained tirelessly devoted to her care, nurturing her through every step of her journey to recovery, Beverly had always harbored a fascination with wild animals, particularly elephants, rhinos, giraffes, and chimpanzees, nurturing a dream to see them up close. Imagine her elation when Marco surprised her on the eve of her 12th birthday with the gift of a safari trip to a southern African country. Beverly's joy knew no bounds as she embraced Marco, expressing her gratitude for his thoughtful gesture. Together, they embarked on their adventure, boarding a flight bound for Africa, hand in hand, ready to make memories that would last a lifetime. However, their arrival in Africa took an unexpected turn when Marco, leading Beverly by the hand, was suddenly apprehended by six police officers, mistaken for a notorious child smuggler. Marco found himself handcuffed and detained, while Beverly was whisked away to a secure location by two female officers. The confusion stemmed from a tip received by the country's police force, indicating the imminent arrival of a child smuggler on the same flight Marco and Beverly had taken, despite Marco's attempts to prove his innocence, including presenting his police ID card and requesting to call his boss for verification, the officers remained adamant in their suspicions, faced with interrogation. Marco asserted that Beverly was his daughter, but the chief interrogator insisted on conducting a DNA test to confirm their relationship, Marco realized his mistake in admitting to Beverly as his biological daughter instead of clarifying her adopted status, but his attempts to rectify the misunderstanding fell on deaf ears as Marco awaited the outcome of the DNA test, his mind raced with worry for Beverly's well-being in the precarious situation they found themselves in, with every passing moment. The gravity of the misunderstanding weighed heavily on Marco, threatening to upend their lives in a 
Foreign land, it took nearly a year for Beverly to recover from the trauma of her accident, during which Marco remained tirelessly devoted to her care, nurturing her through every step of her journey to recovery. Beverly had always harbored a fascination with wild animals, particularly elephants, rhinos, giraffes, and chimpanzees, nurturing a dream to see them up close. Imagine her elation when Marco surprised her on the eve of her twelfth birthday with the gift of a safari trip to a southern African country. Beverly's joy knew no bounds as she embraced Marco, expressing her gratitude for his thoughtful gesture. Together, they embarked on their adventure, boarding a flight bound for Africa, hand in hand, ready to make memories that would last a lifetime. However, their arrival in Africa took an unexpected turn when Marco, leading Beverly by the hand, was suddenly apprehended by six police officers. Mistaken for a notorious child smuggler, Marco found himself handcuffed and detained. While Beverly was whisked away to a secure location by two female officers, the confusion stemmed from a tip received by the country's police force, indicating the imminent arrival of a child smuggler on the same flight Marco and Beverly had taken. Despite Marco's attempts to prove his innocence, including presenting his police ID card and requesting to call his boss for verification, the officers remained adamant in their suspicions. Faced with interrogation, Marco asserted that Beverly was his daughter, but the chief interrogator insisted on conducting a DNA test to confirm their relationship. Marco realized his mistake in admitting to Beverly as his biological daughter instead of clarifying her adopted status, but his attempts to rectify the misunderstanding fell on deaf ears as Marco awaited the outcome of the DNA test. His mind raced with worry for Beverly's well-being and the precarious situation they found themselves in, with every passing moment, the gravity of them. Misunderstanding weighed heavily on Marco, threatening to upend their lives in a foreign land later, the officers received the DNA results, which shockingly confirmed that Beverly was indeed Marco's biological daughter. Marco's laughter echoed through the room as he found relief in the unexpected outcome. The officers, baffled by the turn of events, promptly released Marco and reunited him with Beverly, returning home. Marco couldn't shake the disbelief of the revelation, seeking confirmation. He took Beverly for a second DNA test, which, once again, confirmed their biological connection. Overwhelmed with emotion, Marco and Beverly shared tears of joy, their bond strengthened by the tumultuous ordeal they had overcome together. As they embraced, Marco couldn't help but marvel at the twists and turns of fate that had led them to this moment. Despite the challenges they faced, their love and resilience prevailed, cementing Marco and Beverly's bond as father and daughter, united by blood. And bound by love, thank you for joining us on this journey, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up so you won't miss any of our next videos, we'll be back with more uplifting and inspiring stories.